Grace and peace to all of you and welcome to Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church on this beautiful day, May 15th. Now today we are going to do our birthday blessings. Last week we had some technical difficulties. We started a little late and so we didn't have time. But today we have time. So does anybody have a May birthday that they would like to celebrate? Raise your hand. Oh, <gasps> Riley, whose birthday's in May? Oh, Riley's birthday's in May. How old is Riley? Four years old? What day in May? All right, coming up, May 25th. That's fantastic. Anybody else have a May birthday? I'm looking. Yes, Corin, I'm glad you're back. Corin's got two special birthdays, May 18th, right? Corin got a great birthday present of her son, Jack. So how old is, I won't ask you, but how old is Jack going to be? Pardon me? 15. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right. So any other May birthdays? No? Okay. Oh, right behind me. May he be blessed. There you go. Good. May May's a good month for birthdays. Nancy. Oh, good. That was my mom's birthday. May 29th. Yes. Corin at home. Oh, that's a special day, May 29th. Wonderful. Okay, a anybody else from home with birthdays? No? Okay, how about anniversaries? Anybody got a May? That was a beautiful, beautiful month to be married. Anybody have, let's see, feel free to sit outside or inside. Your choice. Any May birthdays or anniversaries from the Simon family? I believe there's a straggler who has a May birthday, so we'll wait and hear the news when. <laughs> oh, that we'll we'll find out. Okay, a May anniversary in the house? No. All right. Well, let's check in. Does anybody in your family have a May birthday or anything? Oh, your sister does. Okay, great. That's fantastic. All right. Well, um, I think we're gonna open this door. Okay, who remembers how to do this? Um, to open the door, you go away. No, you go towards. There it is. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. Good morning. Okay. If you get cold, we have blankets. No, you're good. You're okay. All right. So if your birthday's in May, please come forward. And you can stand right here in front of the beautiful flowers. Y your sister can come. That's fine. Okay, right there is good. Corin, right here. Okay, so these are our May birthdays. All right, we're going to go ahead and say the day of our birthday again. Corin and Jack are May 18th. Riley is May 25th. And yours, Lena, yours is when? May 10th. All right, same as yes. Okay, all right, May birthdays. God bless you the day that you were born, the beautiful May Day that you were born, and God has blessed you every day since. So hear this good news, May birthdays. You are beloved and have a wonderful birthday month. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Through thee, my 
Please join me in our call to worship. We gather in the spirit of welcome. We gather in the spirit of healing. Jesus leads us and loves us into wholeness. Let us open our hearts and worship God. Uh, we're going to ask you to all find hymn number 791 in the purple uh, hymnal because I was doing the bulletin this week and I could not figure out how to print a bulletin that had the lyrics in it. So we had technical difficulties. So we're doing this little abbreviated bulletin and I know 791 is in that purple hymnal for you. Let's stand and sing together. For you, my God, I wait with hope born of the word like sleepless ones who long to dream i wait and call my lord lord hear my pleading voice and let me Sleepless ones feel rest approach. I know my God is near. For even from the deep, I know you hear my cries. Like sleepless ones who dream at last. I ease my weary eyes And once my soul is still In you I find my rest At peace as though a child upon A gentle mother's breast God, you are my hope. I know that you forgive. Your love redeems me from the depths, so I may rise and Before we get to the unison prayer, Nance Rosencrantz, you're a May birthday. <laughs> bless you, May birthday. And of course, we bless Merle and Will uh, when they were here uh, closer to their birthdays. But blessings be upon you today. Um, all right, let's all join in the unison prayer printed in your bulletin. <laughs> Gracious God. Awaken in us a spirit of connection to each other and to you that will sustain us in times of change and challenge. Free us from fear and worry. Heal us and make us whole. Guide us on your path of light and love and brighten our spirits so that we might bring friendship, hope, and joy to others. Now, please take a moment to listen for God's loving message for you today.
Amen. Hear now your assurance of grace. The grace of God is that free gift that you don't have to earn, work for, or be better than anybody else to receive. But you do have to say yes. You have to open up your heart and your life to accept the gift of grace and to actually be able to walk with God, God's beautiful spirit of love and peace in your heart. So believe the good news. You are accepted exactly as you are. You're forgiven and you are loved. Amen. And now as people who have God's love and peace residing in our heart, let us share the sign of God's peace with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace. <laughs> How's everybody this morning? Doing okay? Yeah? All right, so we always say our names. And one thing I want to explain is your name is a very important thing. And we want to remind each other of our names. But we also are counting on the grown-ups to be able to listen and remember your name. I don't know that they knew that. Grown-ups, are you paying really good attention when the kids are... Abigail, there's a chair for you right here. Um, when the kids are saying their names so that you actually know all the other children, not even just your own, but everybody's kids? We might test them. What do you think, Spencer? Should we test them? We could make it really hard, too. You could all say your name, then you could switch chairs real fast. And we'd see. Want to try that? Okay, let's try it. I'm Bev. Is it Lena? Okay, I thought so. Okay, and your our teachers? Cooper's got is right in between age wise, right? But that's good. We're good. Come and join us for this, Cooper, just to make it a little more fun. All right, you can sit up there with Max and yeah. All right. Now. Okay, now I'm gonna close my eyes. Everybody switch seats. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, Michael, can you come and tell us who all the children are? <laughs> all right. Let's see if you can do it. Yes. Spencer. Lena. 
been, yes, Abigail, Rowan, he gave you some help. There had to be one person he didn't know. M Gabby, Michael, Michael, Gabby. You know each other from the garden, from pumpkin planting. <laughs> yeah, which we're doing again soon. How about the back row? <laughs> I didn't tell him I was going to ask him to do this. <sighs> Help us out, grown-ups. And, of course. Good job, Michael. It's really important. <laughs> it's really important for all the grown-ups to know all your names because this is a community where we all are connected. And if the grown-ups really pay attention, they know your names. And the next thing that happens is Corin. I heard her this morning ask Rowan, "What grade are you in?" Right? And so that's like what we're trying to do here is connect. So um, and make sure that all of the kids and everyone of all ages feels like they really are loved and cared for. So Jody, Jody, raise your hand. Jody back there gave me this book for my birthday this year, The Invisible String. OK, and we're going to let Bao zoom in on it because he's really good at that. The Invisible String. Patrice Kars, and I'm just going to read a couple pages, and then Max and Jack, and maybe Cooper, you can decide if you want to stay upstairs or go downstairs. If you go down, you can help read the book and help be one of the leaders on the game outside. Okay, so let's see. All right, a couple pages just to get you set up, right? Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Do you see these twins asleep on a calm and quiet night? Okay. Do you know something's going to happen next and it's not going to be calm and quiet anymore? <laughs> Suddenly it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, Mommy, they cried out as they ran to her. Mom held something right in front of them and, s oops, hold on, I skipped a very important page. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mom said, you know, we're always together no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed, said Liza. And that's where she says, Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Uh, rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what Mom was holding. But they didn't see anything. I was about your age, their mom said, when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. What's invisible mean? You can't see it, right, Gabby? Yes. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there, asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know you're always connected to everyone you love. Okay, now I'm going to give this book to Max. And Max and Jack and maybe Cooper, if you want to be downstairs, are going to read the rest of it to you. And then you can ask questions and all. But here at church, we say that invisible string is God's love. And it connects every single one of us so that no matter what, because there are difficult times in life, when times are hard, there's an invisible string that connects us so that we can feel loved. Now, do you ask for help when you're having a hard time or do you just keep it all inside? What do you think? Abigail, you're pondering. When you, when you ever have a hard time at school or in life, do you ask for help? You do, yes. Uh, Grown-ups, when you are having a hard time, do you ask for help? I see some heads shaking. I didn't know that that was an okay thing to do till I flunked a course in college. I got an F in math my first year in college. So I'd always gotten A's. I was failing in math, and I didn't know that it was okay to ask for help. That was a big lesson to me to realize that if things aren't going well in any area, it's strong to ask for help, not weak. 
And everybody here is somebody you can ask for help. Everybody, right? And the last thing I'll say before you go down and hear the end of the book and then have a game outside that's, because this is the workbook with games, creative activities to comfort, calm, and connect, <laughs> which is what we're want trying to do. Um, there's been a lot written up about how tweens and teens are having a hard time with the pandemic and maybe l younger kids too. And I want to say s a simple thing to remember. Sleep is very important. Are you all good sleepers? Pretty good? Pretty good. Mm, yeah. S you know what really messes up sleep? Screen time. If you're doing your screen time right before bed, any grown-ups doing that? I'm looking at you, Kristen. <laughs> we talked about that. Uh, probably it was a great thing for me to get a concussion and get the word from the doc that I had to stop the screen time, especially before bed. So one of the ways to stay happier is to not do so much screen time. It's very addictive. So don't do as much as, even as much as your parents let you, and especially don't do it before bed. Make sure you get a good night's sleep and then you're happy, can stay happy, right? All right, let's say a prayer. God, we know how much Jesus loves all children and loves each one of these children and calls them by name. May they feel your blessing and feel connected by that invisible string of love that connects us all. Amen. Have a fun time. You've got a couple fun activities. <laughs>
please join me in a short prayer. Um, Lord God, may we always know the way to our soul's delight, even when it's not clear. Amen. So the, our Hebrew scripture is um, Psalm 42. As a deer longs for streams of water, so does my soul long for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for him who is life. When will I arrive and see the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, saying to me all days, where is your God? These I remember, and I pour my soul out within me, for I walked in the crowd, and I led them up to the house of God with a voice of rejoicing and thanksgiving, a people in celebration. Why do you despair, my soul? You are distressed within me. Wait for God. Again, I will praise him, his face of salvation. My God, my soul within me despairs. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and Hermonim and from the Mount Mitzan. Deep is calling to deep, to the thunder of your waterfalls, all of your breaks and waves, they have passed over me. Amen. is National Mental Health Awareness Month, and there's so much in the Bible that, that talks about mental health, mental illness, and mental health without ever saying those words, right? So you have to actually do some, some historical biblical work and, uh, and really understand a little more about the culture of the time to be able to lift up passages that are, are pointing to this. Um, and uh, without using those specific words, but talking about the soul in distress, Psalm 42. And then um, here's another example from the beloved parable of the prodigal son and his brother. Just We'll just do a snippet. Um, Luke 15, verses 11 through 20, but the focus verse is 17. Listen for God's word. Then Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between his two sons. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had, traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And then he came to himself and he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around his son and kissed him. Amen. And Matthew Chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, which Brian preached on during Lent. This is Jesus speaking. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And last, our epistle reading for today is the opener of the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I'm just going to read verses 1 through 4 of chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, including all the saints through Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, 
so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Amen. Um, so after all that Bible, I'm actually going to start, believe it or not, with Naomi Judd. How many of you have listened to the Judds? And uh, anybody country music fans here? Yeah, a few. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah. Okay. So Naomi, of course, was the mom, and she had her first child, Winona, the day of her high school graduation. Um, and uh, she and her daughter Winona, who were not very far apart in age, became a singing sensation in the 1980s. 20 million records sold, five Grammys, eight country music awards, you know, really a sensation. Um, so then la uh, April 30th, Naomi Judd took her own life. It was very sad for the family and for all of her fans. Did anyone see the interview this week on Good Morning America where Diane Sawyer, I'm looking around, went to Tennessee to talk to Ashley Judd, the younger daughter? No? You did see it? Oh, it, it was beautiful. I, I, I really recommend it. I don't watch Good Morning America, generally speaking, but I am a fan of Ashley Judd. I, I fell in love with Ashley Judd myself when she played, did anyone see the movie? The I think it, I was meant to look this up. Is it The Divine Sisterhood? of No. The something of the Yaya -Ya Sisterhood. Y are you were shaking. Yeah. Oh, what is the name of that movie? Uh, where Sandra Bullock is the adult daughter and she goes back home to try to figure out some of her woundedness. And Ashley Judd plays um, the m alcoholic mother of Sandra Bullock when she was a little girl. And it's a beautiful performance. I grew up in a family that was very much wounded by alcoholism. So it really spoke to me. Um, but anyways, Ashley Judd was designated, deputized, she says, by uh, her mother's surviving husband and also her sister, Winona, to speak to Diane Sawyer of Good Morning America and explain a little bit of the circumstances of her mother's death. It's difficult with a suicide because you don't want to say anything about the way the person took their life and out of fear that there will be people who will get an idea, you know, who are already kind of fragile and they'll go do the same thing. I want to do what Naomi did, you know. So they were very careful about revealing the circumstances of her death. But indeed she did commit suicide and Ashley Judd talks so movingly about her mother's mental illness. So if you can picture this interview, uh, Diane Sawyer and her crew have gone off to this little Leapers Fork, Tennessee, out way outside Nashville where the family had like 500 acres it is so beautiful there. Just in the little bit of the background of the interview you just see, it's like so rural that the only sound is the sweetest bird song. And the roses are just, oh my gosh, just tumbling, these gorgeous roses. It's just so beautiful, right? And so, so Ashley sits there and, and, and without even explaining that, you understand that her mother's depression was so severe and lifelong that all that beauty couldn't get through to her. It couldn't uplift her. Her soul was in that place that Ryan read about in Psalm 42 where nothing could get in. The most startling thing is the very next day, May 1st, she was going to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame with her daughter. And she couldn't hold out that one day. So Ashley Judd said, this is the thing you have to understand about my mother. She was a star. She was uh, a brilliant conversationalist, unfailingly kind, sensitive, and she just would couldn't get off the couch. So many days of her life, she couldn't get off the sofa. I, it was like so isolating. And she said, you have to separate the mentally ill person from their disease. The disease was savage. It lied to her all the time and told her she wasn't loved. She wasn't worthy. Nobody cared about her. So she would get up every day uh, using all of her wherewithal, <coughs> and she would stuff $100 bills into her bra and go down to the Cheesecake Factory in her little town 
and talk to the staff at the Cheesecake Factory, and she'd go over to CVS and talk to the staff there. She knew them all. She would tell Ashley all about their woes, and she'd just pull these $100 bills out of her bra and hand them out to the janitorial staff. I mean, that was as much people energy as she could get and, and, and act on because her voice in her head was so mean to her that all the love of her family and fans and the esteem of her peers could never penetrate that voice. That is mental illness. That's what mental illness does to people. And I think for those who are not suffering, it's really important to understand what that's like as best we can, right? And for those of us who, who know it well from either having s being a fellow sufferer or being, you know, having a loved one who suffers, it's very important that we really are proactive in trying to meet people where they are and be of any assistance we can be to help people who are struggling with mental illness. Because right now, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. The American Academy of Pediatricians, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatrists, and the Children's Hospital Association have declared mental illness of youth and adolescents a national emergency because it's been so exacerbated by the pandemic. But there are things we can do. There are things we can do. It is so important for us to be connected, like I said to the children, for us to know their names. We need you folks at home to actually come to church <laughs> and be here in person and show people that you care about them. I understand COVID concerns. Boy, do I, right? I think we really need to be able to get together enough to be able to let the children and the tweens and teens know how much they matter. We have those of us who are it feeling okay need to be able to share that light with others. Now, Ashley Judd has had many demons of her own. And um, she was raised by a single mom with the sister on the road and uh, went to, I think, 18 schools in 13 years and, uh, and was subjected to a lot of inappropriate and abusive sexual behavior from this wild, I didn't know the country music uh, world was this wild, but apparently it is. Um, and, uh, and so she herself has had a quite a significant recovery journey. And she refers to it as her demons. And that's where we really do intersect with the Bible because you know that Jesus is healing people from demons, people of all ages. Naomi Judd's 76 years old when she took her life her demons were this horrible voice of self-loathing that she could not silence or tame or neutralize or counter in any meaningful way. Ashley Judd, I think, has similar demons. She didn't go into her own situation. But in the Bible, we have children. We have Mary Magdalene. We have uh, the Geras, uh Mark four, 5, Gerasene. You haven't taken Greek yet, right? I always have a hard time. A demon, all ages, men and women, children with demons. There's been a lot written by biblical scholars about are these what are these demons, right? I mean, a good guess is they are mental illness. They are something that takes a person out of being themselves. What took the prodigal son, the younger brother, out of himself? Why would he do something so hurtful to his father as say, I need my inheritance now. I don't care. You're dead to me, so give me the inheritance now as if you were dead. I'm out of here. That's what he did. You have to kind of read through the lines a little bit to get it, but it was what he did was outrageously disrespectful and hateful to his father. And then he left with the money and spent it all, wasted it all. And he was a Jewish uh, young man, so for him to be out in the field with the pigs at his when he hit bottom, you know, that was a pretty serious thing. But he did hit bottom, and he did have a metanoia, a turnaround, and he did come to himself. He came to himself. What is the miracle that causes people who are so far out on the wrong track to have that epiphany, that miracle, that, uh, that light, and turn back towards life and home and love? It happened to the prodigal son, and God, the father, 
welcomes him with arms of compassion. And that's what we want to do here too. We want to make sure that if anybody is out there, they know that there's a home here where they'll be welcomed with compassion. We have to be here to act that out, to be that, to be that love. Paul in the Second Corinthians, there it's a fractured relationship. The church in Corinth is high living, and Paul's trying to tame them, and they don't like it a bit, right? So he's in a fraught situation there. But he's trying to explain to them that when you have afflictions in life, which everyone does, then the consolation that you receive from God is something to share. There's that beautiful prayer, sung prayer of St. Francis. Let me, you know, be consoled to console. We don't hold on to God's consolation. We share it. That's, that's what Paul is trying to tell us. So the Presbyterians Today uh, magazine our kids and mental health is the cover story, and that's pretty much the cover story if you go to our Marin County Health and Human Services Behavioral Health page and look at all the events they've planned for this month for mental health. So learning skills to cope together. Every Wednesday from 2.30 until about 7 p.m., high school students gather at Myers Park Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, North Carolina to connect, do homework, have dinner together, and practice a mental health coping skill. How about that for adapting and meeting a need, right? So Ryan, our wonderful youth director, uh, is a long-term practitioner of Zen Buddhism and meditation. And starting this Thursday, this Thursday, what time? Here. 7 p.m. here Thursday is offering meditation. All ages, all welcome. It's a wonderful, wonderful practice. And I think it's something we can do, right? We want to look for what can we do. A all these very esteemed organizations and then the presbytery, everywhere we look, we know we are in a mental health emergency. This mental health emergency for tweens and teens has touched our own congregation deeply, deeply, several families, deeply. And so it's... <laughs> We have to, s we're called, let's just say that. We're called to respond. This is not business as usual. So let us, let us respond with love. Let us really make that extra effort to be God's compassionate community, to ask people how are they doing, to actually want to know the answer. I know it's hard. We're maxed out with COVID, but we can teach people mental health coping skills. We can teach our teens and tweens that they need less screen time and more sleep. I mean, all the New York Times has run a fabulous series. Uh, it started April last week of April, continuing on this mental health crisis with young people. And the, the basic things are quite simple. More sleep, less screen time, more outside time, more connection, right? We can do that. Let's all do it. Amen.
as we come to our time of prayer, let's all settle in and um, take a breath. Let us pray. Holy One, we give thanks for the church, for some place to go, to be a friend and make a friend, to some place to go where we're accepted, whether we're happy or sad, where we understand that accepting life on life's terms is hard, but the Bible helps where we know that you love us always and that you're with us always, even when sometimes we can't feel it or hear your voice. Help us, Lord, to be a light to others. We lift up all those who are struggling with every kind of difficulty, all those worldwide who do not know peace, who do not have enough of the basics, all those who are struggling with mental illness, all those who are loving people who are struggling all those with addiction, substance uh, dependence, which is the opposite of connection. Help us to heal and to be part of your healing. We pray for the families of those who were shot in Buffalo, New York yesterday in a, in a racial hate crime. And we pray, please, Lord, that our government may give us a solution on gun control to keep guns uh, automatic weapons out of the hands of unstable uh, people and young people. Help us to have schools and grocery stores and every place be safe, especially for our children. We ask for help to give us the wherewithal to make this a safer and more healthy nation. God, in your grace, You hear our prayers. You hear our prayer. God, in your grace. Thank you, Jean. I lift up prayers for uh, Jane, a young mother of two who's at Kentfield Rehab, and for her mother, Christy. May there be a miracle of healing, and may they all be filled with God's peace. God, in your grace. Prayer of thanksgiving for the music today so beautiful and uplifting. God, in your grace, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Use any name for God that brings your heart closest to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Uh, as we come to the time of offering, I want to give a special thanks to all of you for your abiding support of the church and a special shout out to Corn Grub, who moved seven wheelbarrows of compost from the parking lot to the garden this week. <laughs> I would say don't mess with Corin. <laughs> and a special shout out to Michael for continuing to plant and tie up and do all the things we need to do this year for the garden in this windy, cold season, which has been a little tricky, but it's coming. And we do need children to plant the pumpkins, right? Yes. Okay, next Sunday's pumpkin planting. We hope we can do that next Sunday. All right, so uh, thank you again, and the morning offering will now be taken. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. In his love abiding, I shall not be moved. And in him confiding, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the waters, and I shall not be moved. And I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the waters i shall not be moved and though while hell assail me i shall not be moved jesus will not fail me i shall not be moved just like the tree that's planted by the waters i shall not be moved Though the tempest rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. And I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved Just like the tree that's planted by the waters I shall not be moved Oh, just like the tree that's planted by the waters I shall not be moved God of love and justice, we trust that these, our generous gifts, will be put to good and faithful use, bringing about a more just and peaceful world for all your children. Amen. Thank you. All right, any announcements? Pumpkin s Sunday after church, yes. Um, We just we just need people to give an hour really here and there. I mean, it's not like you're not going to commit your whole life. <laughs> so let's see. Anything else? We have meditation this Thursday, 7 o'clock here. Um, I think Brian meant to say youth night. Uh, he would if he were here Friday. Uh, is uh, So meditation Thursday, youth night Friday. And then <coughs> the cookie bake for the unhoused is happening on, I believe, on Memorial Day on the 30th. So uh, at 3 o'clock. So that's what's up, and it's all in the newsletter. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's stand and sing our final song. Um, find it in your purple. It is uh, 692. We love this one. Like 
Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me. Receiving and in giving, Spirit, open my heart. God, replace my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender. All my coldness and fear, in your grace I now surrender. Spirit, open my heart. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living. As you love, may I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit. your love upon my heart as my love my goal my story in each thought word and deed may my living bring your glory spirit open my heart spirit Now, as you go out from here, no matter how overwhelming life seems, ask God to fill you with God's consolation and then have a little to share with others. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forever. Amen. Shall not 
healthy moon, just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be Tree that's planted by the wall. 